sure is fun just arbitrarily blowing off rounds, especially if you're Dr. Moneybags and you can afford to do so. But if you want to try and put a little bit of skill behind it, first and foremost, you got to figure out how to reload the darn thing. So I guess this is kind of like for you beginners out there that aren't really too familiar with firearms, but it's not like the Hollywood movies. You don't have infinite ammunition. These box magazines only hold so much, so you got to learn how to reload. So first and foremost, you're going to have to load up your magazine. This will take 30. I generally load up 28. And then after that, you put it in the magazine well, and then two things can happen. You can pull back on the charging handle, or you can hit the bolt release. And then send the bolt home, you're loaded up again. But eventually you're going to run out of ammunition. So magazine release, there you go, reload it. And that's perfect if you're out on the line and you're at a range or something like that and you're shooting, whatever. There's no particular skill in that. It's just loading and unloading. It's just like doing a dishwasher or something like that. You just got to load it up appropriately. Not hard. But if you're actually going to put a little bit of purpose behind the darn thing, let's say if you're doing in-home defense, well, you might want to put a little bit more thought into how you reload. Now, when it comes down to, let's face it, any kind of fighting and you got to reload, you might want to figure out how to do the basics of it. And we're talking basics. We're not doing like super fancy, uh, super SWAT commando stuff. Okay, very basic for just your regular, even beginner shooter. So if you got a rifle, it's going to pretty much go the same way as your pistol. I'll show that in a second too. But with a rifle, obviously it's not going to be the same. It's going to be a little bit different. But this process is basically the same. And you're going to put that together. I mean, you guys are smart. You'll figure it out. So I'll show you a quick, very easy reload drill on how to do the rifle, then the pistol, and then I'll even show you how to do a transition from rifle to pistol back to the rifle again. Pretty simple stuff, but I figure it's worth a watch for a short. Why not? Now, obviously, if we are home or if you're just Joe out there at the firing range, you're not going to be walking around with a gun belt, okay? But I just have this because I was shooting another video with it. So it's, it's going to be handy for this, but it'd be good practice if, let's say you have a burglar at 3 a.m. and you go and grab your AR-15 rifle from the closet. It'd be a good idea to grab an extra magazine and put it in your pocket just in case, because you never know. Nine times out of ten, you're not going to need it, but for the sake of argument, just to have it. And let's say you get into a firefight. Uh-oh, you ran dry. Now what? Drop the magazine. Sometimes it won't drop all the way. Swipe it out. Put the new one in there. Make sure it's seated. Send the bolt home. You're back in the fight. Pretty simple stuff, really. As you saw, it did have a malfunction. It didn't drop out, so I had to come over and swipe it. So make sure you train yourself to be ready for something like that to happen. It doesn't work the same as it does in the movies. Not everything's perfect. So let's see how we do it with the pistol. If you're like most folks, especially here in America, you're gonna have a gun by the bedside table and that gun, nine times out of 10, is gonna be a pistol. So again, if something goes bump in the night and you go to grab your pistol and you engage, uh-oh, you ran out. Again, like we talked about earlier, it's not a bad idea to grab that spare magazine and throw it in your pocket or something. You're probably not gonna be wearing a gun belt. Throw it in your pocket or in your robe pocket or whatever. Drop the mag, grab another one, put it in there, and it's ready to go again. It's that simple, it's that easy, it's that fast, and you're back in the fight. Just like that. It's really good practice to go out to the range and practice this stuff because who knows, your life might depend on it. Okay, last but not least, if you just happen to be one of those people who is super well prepared or hell, you might be a security guard or who knows, this might benefit you, I don't know. This isn't some kind of training thing, okay? I'm just showing you some basic stuff that I know might be helpful to Joe Q shooter, you know, whatever. But anyway, if you happen to be one of those people that happens to have a rifle and a pistol, remember, malfunctions can and will happen at the worst times. Or you can run dry in the middle of you know, like the craziest fight of your life. So you'll want to keep in mind if you happen to be super prepared and you have a rifle and a pistol handy, know how to do that transition and figure out what's going on with your primary weapon so you can get that back up and run it. I 
I need to reload. Got a lull in the fight. All right, now we got a malfunction. It's not dropping out. Work through it, work through it. Send the bolt home. You're ready, you're back in the fight. And that's the high and low of it, about as easily explained as it can be for doing transition stuff. You can do transition drills in your backyard, at the shooting range, wherever they allow it anyway. And it's just a good idea. You can do it without ammunition too. You can do it with snap caps. You can do dry firing too. It's just a good idea to learn how to do magazine changes. Know what it feels like when you run dry. Know how to do extra reloads. So if I'm running dry and I need to conserve ammunition, stow that back in there. I just put a fresh magazine in there. It's really that simple. You don't have to run dry every time. It's a good practice if you get a lull in the fight of the lifetime. And you know, I'm kind of making light of it, but it can happen. But if it comes down to it, and you need to make sure that you have ammunition still, load a fresh one, and when you get a lull in the action, and retain this one, put it in your pocket for later. You might need it. Well, I'm out. That's pretty much it for the demo. <laughs> Hopefully it was beneficial. I mean, it's super basic stuff. I mean, I'm not trying to train you guys. I'm not a certified instructor or whatever. That's not what this is meant to be. This is just super basic stuff that maybe it'll benefit you. Maybe it'll jog you to get into better training patterns. Get out there, look online, actually go out and meet some professionals, okay, who could walk you through this stuff, show you the best ways to train, because who knows, it might save your life one day you never know. It's better to have the training and the knowledge than not have it. That's all I'm saying. Well, hopefully you guys got something out of this. Either way, I got to shoot some stuff. I had a lot of fun. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.